oh, I don't have a blurred screen anymore. Oh, you have like a half blurred screen. <laughs> like it means, your, it, it means your couch shouldn't be blurred. There it goes. <laughs> okay, this is so weird, whatever. I don't care. Can you see my scout couch though? No, not anymore. Okay, no. I'm like, that this looks really tacky. Okay. Hi everybody. There's, there's. Uh, it says that there's one viewer, and so we're just we're we're trying out this this Zoom and Facebook Live kind of thing. We seem to have a second viewer. Um, so I'm gonna try. I don't know if we've got the messages up where people can see us, but let me see if I can get into. Oh, very cool. And I don't see if there's a way to comment. There's a way to message us. So if anybody's yeah. watching. Um, just tell them to message in the, the, the invite, and then I can look at the questions. Oh, I see Jared. And he says, hi, guys. Happy to see your faces. Happy to see you. Happy to be seen. Let's do it, Mickey says. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Day. Nine others. Let's see who is. Oh, no, that's just, I can't even deal. I don't even see the live stream. Lord, help me. Hey guys, can they, are if we you, on? If you click on the link and then you, you get a watch live video button and you click that, then you get to the, the live stream. Okay. Okay. Anyway, hello everybody. Hello. Um, you know, for, for anybody that's uh, watching this later, because I think everybody watching now probably already knows, my name is John Ivey. This is Kim Bozeman. Kim, why don't you why don't you tell everybody what we're, we're what we're doing here? Hey guys, how are you tonight? So we we love to talk politics, and um, I, if you have not heard, there is a recall election happening in California on Tuesday, September fourteenth. Um, and so we thought we'd jump on here and talk to you guys and share a little bit of information about the history of like the recall and answer some questions. And I mean, politics is fun, right? So you wanna have some fun. And for those of you guys, if there's anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Kim. I like to go by KB or K and B. And um, yeah, I live here in uh, San Joaquin County. John lives in a different county. I don't know if he wants to share that. And um, yeah. we just I'm love talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Okay. Hi, Jared. Hi, Day. Can you hear me, John? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna share my screen in a second, and we're gonna we're gonna introduce what we're here to talk about. There it is. Hey, Jared. Okay. Um, so getting all the technical things right. So those of you that joined us. Um, Last year for, for our election um, live streams, we did a series called um, Why They Don't Want You to Vote, where we went over what's on the ballot. We went over um, different local offices and what they, they do for their work. And we answered questions from, from you. Um, for this year, we have another statewide election coming up. This one is a lot simpler. Um, for most everybody in the state, the ballot just has two questions, right? And the first question is, do we want to recall the current governor, Gavin Newsom? And so uh, we wanted to come and talk about that, that, that recall. Um, also talk about the second question on the ballot, like who would replace Gavin Newsom if he was recalled? And so the, the election's coming up on the 14th. 
And let me go ahead and share my screen. And while John is sharing his screen, as always, we just want to thank you guys for joining us and uh, spending some time on your Thursday night to talk to us. I think, um, you know, John, before we get started, um, you know, I think that it's one thing that we really want to talk about is, is that if both John and I, you know, our goal here is to not tell you how to vote. Um, we just want to tell you the truth and the facts and the impact of your vote. Um, and so obviously we, we both have our own political ideology, um, but we are here to just simply provide you with information. Um, as always, if you have questions, if there's anything that is not clear, um, you know, please feel free to, to you know, chat in the live um, and then we'll take it from there. And definitely, and I, I, yeah, I, I now see the, the, the comments on, on Facebook. And so if you do have any questions, please, uh, we'll, we'll look at that as well. And so I wanted to start out with um, the Secretary of State's website. So you can go to vote.ca.gov or sos.ca.gov and um, click on elections. And you get this great, great list of, of options of what's going on. And of course, the thing going on right now is the 2021 gubernatorial recall election. And so that's everybody in California this time around is um, much like the November election is getting sent a ballot in the mail. And so you, if you don't already have your ballot, um, it should be coming or you need to check your registration. And at this point, you can't update your registration online. Um, you would have to go down to a polling place or to your um, voter registration office um, to get that updated. But for most of us, we at least have our ballots if we haven't cast them already. And Kim has her, <laughs> yep. No, go ahead, John. I, you're going to hand it over to me anyway, so go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, and I know Kim has, has her ballot um, ready to show you, show you what that, that all looks like and how to fill it out and make sure that it, it, it goes in. Um, for your ballots, there's really three ways that you can, you can turn them in for this election. You can um, mail them back, no postage required. Once you fill it out, you sign the, the outside envelope. Um, you, can, you can put it in any mailbox. You can put it in a drop box in your county. Um, and I should have looked up where the drop box locations are, but we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to look those up too. Or on election day on the 14th, um, you can take your, your ballot to any polling place in the county or to your elections office. And um, one thing I wanted to add is, is that today is actually, I called the um, Register of Voters office uh, just shortly. Today is actually the last day that if you, for some reasons, did not receive your ballot, or if you um, made an error on your ballot, you can call and, well, actually, today was the last day. It's six o'clock. I forgot to have it. I'm sorry. Tomorrow is the last day to have your ba ballot mailed out to you. A lot of people don't know, we talked about this in our first live series that the San Joaquin County um, Registrar of Voters Office is down in um, Stockton and they are open tomorrow from eight to five. And so you can have a replacement ballot sent out uh, to you and tomorrow is the last day to do that by mail. So if you don't want to truck yourself to Stockton, go ahead and give them a call first thing in the morning so that they can get a, a ballot out. <clears throat> and the uh, polls open on the 14th at 7 a.m. and they close at 8 p.m. And uh, you, if you are in line by eight o'clock, you have to be allowed to cast your ballot. Yeah, and we're going to give you lots of great tidbits like that of what's going on. But again, if you guys have any questions, like you you wanted to know something, or you just have a, a, a comment about things, you can put it in in the comments, and and we'll we'll talk about it. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you on this on the the vote.ca.gov website um, is the official voter information guide. And so we all get sent this one one per household is the is the printed version. And I'll go ahead and pull that up and, and talk about um, relatively easily for us. Uh, there's only two questions on the ballot, so it's kind of a, a, a short conversation. 
But in the in the um, voter information guide, first thing is going to be the voter bill of rights, which lays out um, the the rights that each voter has and and spells out who who can vote and how they can vote. Um, which is very important if you if you run into anybody that um, it says you know I I'm not allowed to register to vote or you know I've 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 been to prison before and so I can't vote. It's very important to let them know that that is not the case in California. That we don't um, disenfranchise people for life, um, and that anybody walking around if you see them and and they tell you oh I I can't vote you know it's very likely that they can. And so make sure you you you. Give them, you know, go to vote.ca.gov, look at the Voter Bill of Rights, um, talk to your register, um, get people to vote. Um, and so if we go down the, the, voter, the, um, the voter guide, has a lot of good information, a letter from the, our, our new Secretary of State, Dr. Weber. And then eventually we get down to um, kind of an explanation of whether or not you should vote yes or no on the first question. And so the ballot has a first question of, should you recall Governor Newsom? And you get to read Governor Newsom's statements about why you shouldn't um, recall him. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit. And then you get the, the, the statement from the people that organized the recall as to why um, they wanted to recall the governor. So we got a lot of good information that we'll get to talk about. And then it talks about the second question, which is, um, who would replace Gavin Newsom if he was recalled. And an important thing that we wanted to touch on is that there's two questions on the ballot and you can, you can vote on both. You can vote on just one of them. You could technically leave them both blank and turn in your ballot. Um, <laughs> so it, uh, any of those options work. You do not have to vote on the whole ballot. Um, you can vote just on the ones that you want. And we'll talk a little bit about how you answer the first question doesn't doesn't dictate how you have to answer the second question. And so you can both um, vote to, to recall Governor Newsom and not vote for his replacement. You can vote to keep Governor Newsom, which would be a no vote on the first question, um, and also vote for a replacement. It wouldn't hurt Governor Newsom at all if those votes um, are counted completely separately. Um, John, and one thing that I want to add, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it a little bit more, is I've received a lot of questions on number two. And, you know, a Governor Newsom's campaign is advising people to leave number two blank. Uh, one of the things that I, I just want to say, and again, we'll talk about it a little bit more, is, is if you leave that blank and Governor Newsom is actually um, recalled, then you have not essentially participated in selecting who your next governor of California will be. So that is um, one thing, you know, again, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I definitely want you to know that um, as John is, just to emphasize what John has already said, that you, um, you can still vote however you want and then select someone. Um, there, you know, to replace Newsom if he is in fact recalled. And that's really important clarification that I want uh, to provide. And I know that that direction is coming from Newsom's campaign. And so I just wanted to really uh, strongly address the impact of that. Yeah, and if anybody follows me on social media, you'll get to hear me yell about this all the time. <laughs> um, I am very much, a, I'm a pro-democracy person. And um, to me, the instruction um, from a campaign to, to leave a ballot blank, to discourage people from running in a race, um, to basically say, don't, don't, you know, just vote on the first question, don't vote on the second question. It really kind of strikes me as what are they trying to do? And there's there's really two things that they could be trying to do. They're just trying to, to do a strategy of a simple message. In other words, they want people to keep Governor Newsom and they feel like it would be too confusing for us to, to understand that you can vote to keep him and vote for somebody else. And so they don't want people leaving that first question blank. If they're if they're Democrats, they want them to, to vote no. And so that's a simple thing. The other side is that they want to be able to say if Governor Newsom is recalled and somebody else gets the seat, a, a, a Republican gets the seat, they want to be able to point to that and go, that's not a legitimate governor. Look how low the, the, the turnout was on the second question. 
And so okay. in either case, I go, oh, well, you should have more faith in voters <laughs> and, and push harder to do voter education um, and so that everybody understands it. And, you know, election results, sometimes we don't win. And that's that's kind of a not just a, a drawback of democracy. That's a feature is that we 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 lose elections and we just plan for the next one. And so that's important either way on how this this election goes is that we don't um, become people who who decry election results or say that it's rigged or that it's illegitimate. That um, if the governor is recalled or if he's kept, it's because the people voted that way and then they voted for a replacement. And so, Jared, I don't, I don't have a way to make it more sensible as to as to why they they they're staunch on their leave leave the um the second question blank, but that's how it that's how it all appeared to me. Um, and so, um, I'm gonna jump in here because I think that we are actually getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we are so excited to talk to you guys. And so, before we get into like the nitty gritty and really talk about um, the recall. John and I kind of wanted to, which John, he's it, um, talk to you a little bit about the history of the recall, right? And a lot of people don't know this um, so far in my conversations that um, we actually had a recall in California where Governor Gray Davis was recalled. And that is actually how Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California. That was in, I believe, I looked it up a couple of days ago, 2003, John, correct me if I'm wrong. And he was, became the governor by 55, I remember this stat, by 55.4% of the vote. So I kind of like, um, I'm going to hand it over to John, but you know, this is not the first time that California has experienced a recall um, and um, attempt. Um, and we survived <laughs> um, with, you know, the first recall of a governor in 2003. I was actually out of high school there, so I can tell you that. I'm still here standing. Um, and so before I turn it over to John, the one thing that um, we really are going to talk about in more detail later is the fact that you see a lot of, um, I'm going to just use this word, fear mongering and scare tactics being pushed around. Like basically California is going to fall apart if, rec um, if Newsom is recalled. Now, I want to be clear, there are some serious uh, ramifications that can come uh, depending on your political ideology that can come from Newsom being recalled. Some people might think that they would be dire and some people may be happy. Um, it's really, really important, um, you know, when you guys are on social media to, again, do some fact checking, right? And let's all be a little bit better about <sighs> sharing the narrative, not just from your perspective, right? Because I think that, you know, John and I are both really passionate about democracy. We're really passionate about hearing other people's perspective, although we might disagree. As you guys know, John and I disagree. I don't think on a lot, but on some, you know, really important things. So I want to kind of stay focused here. But again, we're going to talk about it a little bit more about some of the actual implications of what can happen if a Newsom is recalled. But again, the fear mongering that is going on, you know, um, we, we will be okay, right? There are some things that absolutely could not be ideal, depending on your political ideology. Um, but we will be okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to John. So John can kind of walk us through a little bit more of like the recall, like how do we get here? Um, and like, you know, kind of a little bit more in detail. So it's all you, buddy. Yeah, definitely. And so uh, like, like Kim mentioned, um, we kind of want to start by talking back in, in 2003 land. Uh, so the not only the last time a governor um, was recalled, it was the last time a governor faced a recall, and it was the first successful recall of a governor in, in California's history. Um, and so recall has been a part of our state for um, half a century, um, and it's used, it's, it's used quite often um, at lower level. Um, politicians can, can face recalls. And I believe the stat was that um, Governor Newsom had faced 21 different efforts 
um, to get him recalled just in, in, in this last term alone, as people have signed up and said, oh, we can collect enough signatures, we'll get it. But really, the signature requirement is a lot, <laughs> and so it usually doesn't, doesn't happen. The last time it happened was in 2003, and that was um, against Governor Gray Davis, who was a Democrat. Um, he was a uh, he 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 won his election to become governor pretty 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 handily, um, but then he faced some major problems: um, economics, uh, you know, power companies and power deals. That um, many people were not happy with the governor, and so. I wanted to show you on the SOS website again, in the on the elections page, if we go all the way down, we get a cool tab called election statistics. Election statistics. And in there, we can look at old information, such as statewide election results. And you can see all the statewide election results going all the way back, I think it goes to 1990 on here, including the 2003 statewide election for the statewide special election, and we get all kinds of good information, including the complete statement of vote. Um, and if we scroll down to the, the good stuff, <laughs> we get to see how many people were registered, how the turnout was. And over 60% of registered voters voted in the last recall in 2003, which was pretty high for a um, for an off-year election. And so usually elections are on even years and it's either a, a, a time that you're electing the governor or a time that you're electing the president. Usually the presidential elections get more turnout, but this was a relatively high turnout, uh, especially for that time. And so we'll talk about that a bit more. There were a couple of other things on the ballot. Uh, there were some ballot propositions, So let's see here. If we scroll down for um, the big question, we get a statement of the vote summary. So Kim was Kim was right about the fifty five point four percent figure, but that was the figure for how many voted to recall Governor Gray Davis, and so about close to five million people, about four million nine hundred and seventy six thousand people. Um, voted yes on the recall. And that, that beat the 44% the that voted no. And a whole close to 400,000 people didn't even vote on the first question. Um, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was on the ballot with all these other names, <laughs> about 135 or something, there's a lot of names <laughs> on that second question. Um, he, he won with 48% of the vote. So less than a majority of the, the people who cast their ballot cast it for, for Arnold Schwarzenegger, but he beat the, the second place guy who was um, Cruz Bustamante, who was Arnold, or it, well, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. He was Gray Davis's Lieutenant Governor. And then after um, Arnold won this election, of course, he was Arnold Schwarzenegger's Lieutenant Governor because our Lieutenant Governor is an independently elected position. And so we'll talk about that a bit. Maybe, maybe this is the time to talk about that, is that um, we have a set way of doing um, a replacement for the governor. Say the governor resigns or the governor um, passes away while in office. Um, the person that takes up the role is the lieutenant governor. And so the lieutenant governor is elected at the same time as the governor, but it's, in, it's an independent race. And so there's candidates and you vote for them. Um, and so when facing a recall petition, the, the governor actually has the option to just resign and hand the, the reins over to the lieutenant governor. And if they don't, well, then they, they're, they're basically rolling the dice. And if that, that recall succeeds, then their party loses, is, is usually going to lose control of the, the governor's office. Um, so John, can I, yep. um, can I interject for one second? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, the current Lieutenant Governor, um, her name is Eleni, um, and I'm assuming she's a Greek heritage. I cannot properly pronounce her last name, so I'm not even going to embarrass myself um, by saying that. So um, 
I kind of want to say a little bit more directly what John is saying. I think it's really important for people to understand that this could have all been avoided if you align with Newsom and his political ideology if he had resigned. And John, he said that, but I'm like saying it, saying it that you, <laughs> I want you guys to truly understand that. And then Eleni would have um, become governor. Uh, so again, I just wanna say that because I'm a little irritated about that fact. Um, and so I won't, I don't have no problems hiding that, but I'm gonna um, turn it back to John for him to continue uh, going this. And if you guys have any questions, do not hesitate. I'm trying to watch the live, but we're a little bit delayed here. So um, please jump in and ask us. This is for you guys. Yeah, and if somebody has asked a question and we just are, aren't responding to it, it's because we we are technologically challenged <laughs> and we have, we have missed it. <laughs> um, you can always uh, catch us later and we'll we'll talk about it. But um, other than that, we, I think we see the comments. I think we're seeing the comments. Um, and so I so uh, again, like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was able to win the vote um, against both Gray Davis in the in the first question of, of recalling Gray Davis, but also in the second question. And so the, the Democrat strategy back in 2003 was that Cruz Bustamante, he ran on the, the, the campaign slogan that you vote no on the recall and you vote Bustamante on the second question. And so what they, they took away from that is that that's not an effective strategy, is that that might have confused voters. And oh, I should I should reshare that screen because I wanted to talk about this this stat um, right here is that um, about about four million people voted to keep Gray Davis in his seat, but only two and a half million people voted for the Democrat on the second question, and so what what, what you have is a big drop off for the second question in 2003, uh, where, where people, they filled out the first question and then they stopped. And um, and so this time around, we're definitely going to see that. Uh, we're gonna see a lot more answers on the first question because the Democratic Party this time around said, don't even worry about that second question. Um, they told everybody in the party, don't don't run for office. Don't, I mean, don't don't run for it. Even if you're gonna run for governor next year, in the next election that's coming up in, in like seven months for governor, if anybody didn't know, um, <laughs> governor is going to be on the ballot in seven months, which um, I think Kim takes us to the, the kind of a second thing that I want to talk about. And, and you already mentioned um, kind of doom and gloom is what's going on <laughs> right now. And a bit of that is a campaign strategy by Newsom to, to make sure that you know that the stakes are high um, and they might I don't want to say exaggerate the stakes, but they stakes, but they might exaggerate the doom and and gloom of things to make sure that you um, you care about the the election, which isn't necessarily a wrong thing to do. So I don't want to give them too much trouble on it. It's good that people care, but I do want to stress that you should not be depressed. And I've talked I've talked to people who are very scared by the advertising, very scared about what's going on um, in the world in general. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about, well, what happens? What happens next if um, governor, um, if the recall is successful? And so, and by successful, we mean on that first question, if more than 50% of the people who vote, um, vote yes on the recall, then um, whoever gets the most votes on the second question, whether or not they get a majority, they can get 40%, they could get 30%, they could get 18%, if they have more votes than anybody else on the second question, um, they will become governor. And those results will be finalized and certified um, in mid-October. And then that new administration will come into power and it will be kind of, uh, you know, everybody everybody clear out their offices, get out, I've got to, to build my own, own government. But that's gonna be kind of a short-lived term. So the rest of Governor Newsom's term is only until um, January, excuse me, January of 2024. Am I doing the math right? No, no, January of 2023. Um, and so yeah. so um, just, just next year, um, we might have a new governor. 
and uh, we'll have a new primary election in July, and then in November, we will be selecting the next governor for the next four years. Um, John, let yeah. me ask you a question. So I think the audience like is dying to know, okay, worst case scenario, like what, it, what in our humble opinion is the worst thing that can happen are a couple of the worst things that can happen from a recall. If, if this particular recall, if Newsom is recalled, let's let's give it to you straight. What is like, give me one thing and then I'll give you one more. Okay. Okay. Well, for one, <laughs> um, the, the, the person that will be representing our state right now is very likely to be um, someone who is on the far right, is a, is a Trump supporter, is a Republican. Um, and so it's it, it it's it's scary just having somebody in a powerful position um, that can can affect policy and and move our state in a direction that most of us would be very uncomfortable with. Okay, so I want to add one thing though, and I think it's important. It is scary to some people and other people, obviously that. Um, are not happy with Newsom. They are they are happy about this. Um, I think for me, when we talk about the far right, um, I want to make sure, like, because our audience, we are doing this for people who are not really politically engaged, and so we mean you have Republicans are considered to the right, Democrats are considered to the left. So far right meaning like a little bit more extreme, where you have like moderate Republicans that I kind of like to talk about it as like. The Democrats and the moderate, moderate Republicans, a moderate, they align on some things and they can get along a little bit better when you're far to the left and to the right, uh, working together for the common good of the United, the citizens becomes a little bit more difficult. And so uh, thank you for that, John. So the one thing that I want to say in, in my scenario, the worst thing that can absolutely happen is, is that we all know right now the Democrats have control of the Senate by a very slim majority. So like, I'm going to just go worst, worst, worst case scenario for some. Diane Feinstein is one of the senators that represents California. She is um, no longer in her youth, shall we say. So let's just say that Newsom, um, I'm sorry, is recalled. And right now the leading candidate, um, based on the last time I checked the polls, which John, please correct me if I'm wrong, was Larry Elder, okay? And so Mr. Elder has said that he's going to undo everything that Newsom has done regarding COVID mandates and um, vaccine and mass mandates. And he is a Republican and he is a very far right Republican. And so if Newsom, I think it's important for our audience to know, right? That if Newsom is recalled and Elder is elected, if something happened, to any of the current California senators and Larry Elder is in office, then he gets to select the next senator of California. And the impact of that, right, is um, we will lose, the Democrats will lose control in the Senate. And California will then have a Republican governor and a Democratic governor. Now, again, depending on your political ideology, this might be a win-win for you. Um, depending on if you're on the other side of the spectrum, you might be crumbling in your seat right now. So regardless of who you are voting for, um, I think that that's why it's really important to share information and understand the impact. A lot potentially could be at stake here. And again, this is the worst case scenario, right? And I'm just, I wanna be very honest about that. We'll let you guys know of the, the the possible impact, right? And that's it. That's something that's that's really important that I, I want to say. And so I'll turn it back over to my buddy John. Okay, yeah, and 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 so that is a, a bad worst case is getting to pick a replacement for um, Senator Feinstein or any of our our, our statewide offices um, in case something comes up. Um, aside from that, the, the governor is a position with a great amount of power. 
And so the governor um, is the, the chief executive of our government. Um, they're able to direct state agencies to take actions. Um, they're able to um, do a lot of important things. And we've noticed that during a pandemic that the governor used emergency powers to um, you know, take economic control over the state, to set up um, you know, all mail ballot elections um, without needing to wait for the legislature to act. Um, and so very powerful, but also um, in some ways very much at the, the the, the has to follow the law. <laughs> um, and so the, the governor is not all powerful, cannot just you know, move mountains uh, with their thoughts. And right now, the, if, if, for instance, Larry Elder became governor, he would be governor over a, uh, a, a government that is mostly ran by um, Democrats. The Democratic Party has a super majority in both houses of our, our state, our state Senate and our state assembly, meaning that if the Democratic Party all agrees on, on a piece of legislation, they can pass it um, without needing to consult with the governor. And so the governor would not be able to veto something if it is um, unanimously um, supported by the Democratic Party. Now, with that said, there, there are things that aren't unanimously supported by the Democratic Party. In fact, a lot of them, the Democratic Party is a kind of a big tent here in California. And so we have conservative Democrats, we have liberal Democrats. Um, and so there is potential that those conservative Democrats are, are, are going to get more their way with a Republican governor uh, than they would with uh, a Democratic governor. But it, it, overall, the things that um, kind of Democrats agree on, the major things such as, you know, um, you know, hot topic right now, um, the right to abortion access, um, the, you know, basically um, our, our, our uh, discrimination laws, our, our ability to, to welcome um, a diverse um, group of, of people as, as um, citizens and residents of California, our protections of immigrants and things like that, um, a, a Republican governor is not going to have the power to, to um, dismantle those systems, especially overnight. Um, it just, it just, it's not, it's not the end of, 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 you know, the California we know if the governor is a Republican. And the same thing happened in um, 2003. Um, Governor Schwarzenegger is 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 um, much is, uh, at least a bit farther to the left than uh, Larry Elder's is, um, such as uh, very famously Schwarzenegger is uh, believes in climate change <laughs> and knows that it exists <laughs> is, is a problem, um, and so uh, as much as uh, like whatever your opinion of Schwarzenegger the governor um, ended up as he did you know, managed to, to, to not completely destroy the, the state with this struggle with the Democrats. So he, he did the split government thing, um, not end of days, which was also a Schwarzenegger movie and a good movie. Um, and so I don't know if I went too far on talking worst case scenario. There's more talking like not, not the worst case scenario, just, just less, less doom and gloom. So one thing I want to add, John is, a. Uh, He's my technical, like his brain is like, Whoa. so for those of you guys who I just kind of want to restate what he said, for those of you who are just getting involved in politics and might not, you know, might feel like a little overwhelmed or lost, you know, first of all, again, no worries. Um, I don't know everything and we're, we're here for you, right? We're here for everyone, but um, essentially what, you know, John is saying um, is, is that whomever comes into office is still going to deal with a majority control democratic uh, California state. So their power is, is just very minimal. Um, I think the one thing that I want to kind of ask John about, because I like when I do these Q and A's and ask John questions is, is John. So um, I'm going to kind of like take us back a little bit. And we talked about, you know, you talked about a little bit about 
how a lot of people were displeased. You know, I'm going to rephrase your words here with some of the actions that Newsom took during the pandemic, right? We all know that there was a shutdown in California. I know that a lot of small businesses were impacted. A lot of people had questions. Why are small businesses being shut down and major corporations like Walmart being allowed to open? So that's kind of something that a lot of people blame Newsom for. Right. And if you watch TV, you see governor um, or sorry, you see candidate elders advertisement and he talks about Newsom was irresponsible with billions of uh, dollars and he just let blue, let it go. Well, I'm going to connect what John was saying about oversight of state agencies. We all know that during the pandemic, uh, the uh, Employment Development Department, a.k.a. the EDE, EDD, was pretty much a nightmare, right? It was pretty bad. And we know if you watch the news, you saw a lot of um, reports of fraud, right? Um, I know personally people that were impacted and had their unemployment suspended because they were dealing with like all of these fraud verifications. So that is an example where Newsom has oversight of the agency, but there is an elected, appointed official, I'm sorry, they're appointed, and I forget their name, it's a lady, I actually sent her a LinkedIn because I was mad, um, that she actually is the one making the decisions, the day-to-day -day decisions of what's happening in the EDD. But if you watch the commercial with Mr. Elder and you don't understand politics, right, you would think that you know Newsom is there making every decision and he actually appoints someone just like a CEO does and he entrusts that person to make decisions and we all know that the EDD definitely needs a second lens now that's he here here nor there but I kind of wanted to take it back of how do we get here right it was decisions like that that a lot of people were um, upset about and one of the things for me that kind of chaps my hide is, is you hear this narrative that it's a Republican recall. And I just need to say this very honestly, it's not just Republicans that are not pleased with Newsom. And again, I just wanted to um, interject, connect a couple of things and just talk about when again, we're watching the news and we're reading Facebook posts. It's just really important to understand the political infrastructure, how it works, how they intertwine so that you can make the best informed decision. I'm gonna stop there, but you guys know I like the tangents and John hopefully will stop me and I'll stop him, but we are so excited. You know, I'm just, I'm made of tangents. I just, I just go <laughs> off. <laughs> And like, and Jared's, Jared's asking about, um, you know, what kind of executive order powers does the governor have? Could he or she make sweeping changes that way? And, you know, absolutely can make some changes. And so it, it's sort of like the, the, the governor is the CEO of, of, of the government and they appoint, like, like Kim just said, um, they appoint the director of all of these different agencies. And so when, if, if another governor comes in, they can ask everybody for their resignations, fire everybody and put their, their own people in. And most of those don't require any um, input from the legislature. Some appointments do. Um, so some appointments that the governor has are not completely discretionary that they'll have to get the Democrats to sign off on them. Um, which is also the, the, the case of, of, um, you know, appointing replacement candidates and stuff. So, but that's that's one thing is that that being able to manage the people who are managing the things. Um, along with that, we have this idea of executive orders, and so executive orders are or sit in a kind of, and this is true of the president as well. Um, sit in a realm where you have legal authority to do some things. And then you kind of have just a managerial authority to do other things, and you can you can mix them together um, with an executive order. And so, in the case of Governor Newsom, he he wrote executive orders um, related to his emergency powers. And so, the legislature gives the governor certain powers in an emergency to 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 act appropriately. Um, for instance, um, some states their their governor has similar powers and have um, you know set executive orders that say you can't do a mask 
mandate or masks aren't allowed in this state, um, that sort of thing. Would the California governor have that power? Maybe, but if the governor tried to exercise it that way, they probably wouldn't have it for very long uh, because <laughs> the power coming from the, the law is coming from the legislature. And so again, that, that super majority in the opposition party probably won't let executive orders that, that try and do something um, that they don't want to, to sit and lie. On the other side of thing is that there's executive orders that don't carry the force of law, but that um, administrative agencies, so the state agencies like the EDD, um, are still bound to follow. And, and just logically, um, if the person running the agency was, was hired by the governor, they're going to listen to what the governor tells them to do. And so you, so, so it's definitely not worthless to be governor, even with an opposition party in, in charge of the, the Senate and Assembly, but it, it, isn't, um, it isn't so much that they're all powerful. And really a lot of the power that the governor has now is granted because um, they're, they're in the same party and, and, and um, that we have a supermajority democratic state. And so they trust the governor to be able to do a lot of things. And so with yeah. that change, um, just, so this recall is not just the only time that you could have a party switch in the governor's office either. Um, obviously we're, we're doing an election next year as well. And so these are always questions of how, how, how would our state look um, with a Republican governor? Um, would it look much different? And most of us did not feel different uh, when Arnold Schwarzenegger was, was governor <laughs> as opposed to, um, to uh, such as Newsom now. Um, is that well, we one know, caveat, Fred. We weren't in the middle of a global pandemic with. Yes, <laughs> but we with, were. Um, but was. We were in an economic recession, though. An economic, in, yeah, an economic recession, <laughs> but not a global pandemic. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, John still loves me, even though I cut him off sometimes, and then I apologize profusely after. <laughs> the meeting but I just want to I think for me you know hey I I think it's a big difference right you know I'm just saying it is important, we, it's yeah. important I, I just don't want it's I don't important. want people to be depressed <laughs> about the news yeah. I don't want no, I don't we, want everybody we're to be not depressed. trying to depress you but we, I just kind of I gotta keep it a little bit more like punch in the gut kind of John hmm. let me ask you a question because I want you to address this um and um when you talk about one of the things that I've, I had a question, I actually had a kind of heated debate on is, is a lot of people are concerned about what happened in New York City with Bill um, de Blasio and him mandating vaccines for public spaces. Um, so if you, it was a theater, a restaurant, um, um, a gym, right? So I was a little bit curious and I honestly got myself, I'll be honest, a little bit confused at really trying to understand this. Um, and so I'm gonna turn over to John, but I wanna say this, right? Is, is that every state has a different constitution, right? And so what happens in Florida, right? It is also based in the foundation of that is Florida state constitution, right? California has California state constitution, right? And so um, what you see right now is a lot of Newsom using his power more over like public agencies, like schools. So um, a lot of you guys know, I work full time for the state. I work for Caltrans. So Newsom has implemented a mandate that if employees are not vaccinated, they have to have um, weekly testing, right? So we actually could have the option to refuse to share, right? So our medical privacy was protected or um, we could share voluntarily. And so that's an example of Newsom, you know, um, enforcing his power. And I want to clar clarify, John said it so politically, I'm going to say it as not politically correct, is, is that when we talk about emergency powers, right, obviously public safety, the governor is responsible for this, right? And so in situations where there's public safety at risk, the powers are enacted, right? And so a lot of those decisions become because public safety 
I hope that we all believe that this is real and we understand that this is real. Science is real and we won't go there with the conspiracies. So public safety is at risk, right? And so there's enhanced powers. Um, so anyway, so what I wanted to ask you, um, John, is, is that when you talk about how we have, we could possibly have Mr. Elder as governor, and then we have a democratic controlled um, legislate, like what does that mean to the people who don't really understand politics or who again, are just like, like kind of break that down for them. Well, I would say one of the things that this highlights is that our parties are not monoliths. So it's not that if you're a Democrat, you're going to vote this way, you're going to want these laws and, and stuff. There's, there's different, different Democrats. And so, for instance, right. um, the governor has decided it, it, through, through executive order, through, through direction to the, the various state agencies, that our, our public workforce um, should be vaccinated. And if they're not vaccinated, they should um, be tested regularly so that we can have um, safe working environments and help clamp down on the, the spread of COVID. Um, alternatively, the legislature could have passed a law saying the same thing, um, but maybe there isn't a, you know, enough support in the Democratic Party to, to, to go that direction, or maybe they just wanted to, to put that in the governor's hand and say, you know, if you don't like it, talk, you know, talk to that guy, don't talk to us. Um, and so that situation changes if you have a different governor in, is that maybe the, the Democratic Party will, will instead um, want to immediately, you know, pass some, the same, the same mandate that, um, that uh, Newsom passed in, in through executive order or for direction to the, the agencies. Maybe the legislature thinks, oh, that was such a good idea. We want to make it a law now. Um, or maybe they don't. And so that's again one one thing that could definitely change if we have a different governor is that that mandate could go away, which hasn't at least I've, at a few the agencies that I've been tracking haven't haven't actually started implementing that yet. They're they're still gathering their their information um, before implementing the testing. Um, and Great so, good point. And at the same time. Does the governor now have the power to mandate vaccines, like to, to go um, in public? And we were probably looking at the emergency powers that he has and how he used them and what the courts have said about it. Is probably the governor also had the ability to say, yeah, if you're going to a restaurant, you need to have your, your vaccine card or you need to have a recent test. Um, and the governor made the decision that, that, is, that that's too extreme of a measure. Um, or that it would be too unpopular of a measure or something like that. And likewise, our legislature also has the power to pass a law mandating vaccines um, across the board, as they have done for, you know, what, 100 years <laughs> or so. If you, if you want to attend public school in, in the state of California, you know, get, get your vaccines. And so these are not unusual conversations to have around what is the, the nature of government or what is the power that we have. And some people will talk about, well, it's unconstitutional for the state to do this or for the governor to do that or, or uh, for Joe Biden to, to do this or that. But really, we have a, a strong history of, of public health measures by government. It's sort of an expected role of government to deal with pandemics and um, to respond to them uh, with sensible measures. And so there is, there's a great amount of power to do things, but there isn't um, really any laws that require um, the governor to, 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 to act in a certain way or to take these steps. So the biggest thing that we would lose in a different style of governor, one that's getting elected to reduce our pandemic response is that we would have a reduced pandemic response. Um, which brings me to one point that I've, I definitely, I hope that you've already thought of and already got, is that you you get to vote on who would be the replacement candidate, <laughs> and so does so does everyone else, <laughs> and so it's definitely um, look through the list of, of of candidates, and I would say that you should also be telling other people about the candidates that you find that you think would be good um, at being governor. That if you have a, a you have a choice, your ballot's secret, but your choice doesn't have to be, and really the only way that somebody is going to win an election is if you 
help spread the word about the one that you want. Now, we're a little late in the game for organizing for a candidate, but uh, I definitely feel better about myself at least trying <laughs> to, to vote to vote by conscience and not leave the, that ballot blank when we know the ramifications of, of what if uh, uh, the people who are voting choose um, somebody that, that I would not like. And so definitely, yeah. I, I encourage everybody, fill out your ballot, fill out both questions. Um, you don't have to for your, your vote to count, but if, if you care about who's governor, you should definitely vote on, on both questions. Yeah, and John, that actually brings me, I, you know, I should have told the audience that I'm not like uh, distracted. I'm watching the live on my iPhone because it is more uh, quicker. There's like a delay on if I'm watching it via Facebook, so I'm checking the comments. And that actually brings, Abe um, had a great question, and he talked about, you know, some of the bad behavior, essentially, that Newsom engaged in that kind of got him in the hot seat, like going to restaurants when, you know, being seen without a mask, right, when he is ordering citizens to to do make a decision, right? He's, he's not, he wasn't, we, let's be honest, he wasn't leading by example, and that um, a lot of people were pissed off. Um, and then, you know, um, A talks about, is there a candidate um, which is an extension of what you were talking about that is more of an independent and willing to come across the aisle and work um, for the common good of the citizens. I use the example a lot um, that, you know, the Democrats and Republicans, depending on how far or how, how far right or far, far left they are, are essentially like the worst set of divorced parents ever. Right, they're selfish. They are not looking out for their kids, us the citizens, and they're just involved in all of this banter. So Abe wants to know um, about like, is there a specific candidate um, that is independent? And again, we don't have a problem telling you that. Is it forty nine or forty six, John? I can't remember. I think it's forty six. Forty. There's forty six candidates on the um, the ballot. I shared the link in the chat where you can see a list of the candidates um, and what their political statement is. Um, so John, off the top of your head, can you name a couple? I, I think the, the, is his name Kevin? I don't know if he's an independent, but yeah, he's not really. Yeah, well, I, like, I, wanted, like, I wanted to stay away from giving my, my opinion on, on each of them. No, we don't want your opinion. We just, we don't want your opinion on who to vote for. We want your opinion on, is there someone on the ballot that is an independent? That's all we want to know. And do you know that person's name? Um. Yeah, well, here, let me, let me share... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we got, Again, well, we, we're not here to tell you guys how to vote. We just want to give you the information. Yeah. And so I get I, I let's let's go down the list a little bit and see if we can run into to somebody that fits that mold. Um, and so I'm just gonna kind of summarize the candidates. Um I'm telling you kind of what well, I not think all of them, because there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, not all of them. We're gonna we're gonna briskly go through here, but we start off with like yeah. Dennis Richter here. He's no party preference. But he's the elected leader, Socialist Workers Party. He's a leftist. He's a lefty. Uh, we got Brandon Ross here. He, he calls himself a, a viable moderate Democrat. Um, we've got Doug Osi, who's a, a Republican. We've got Caitlyn Jenner, who is a Republican. We've got Falconer, who's a Republican. Holly Blade, who doesn't, who didn't say anything more than leadership for a brighter tomorrow, so I wouldn't call her a, a, a across the aisle type because she didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and John, um, where again are you getting this information from? Yeah, and so this is all in the voter guide, the 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 the, the list of candidates on the the voterguide.sos.ca.gov website, and I put the the link in the in the Facebook. And so I just wanted to go. These are what they say about themselves. Um, so this is one source, and so I wanted to give a, a few examples of that. And so you could read through these, and uh, yeah, the voter guide, and you got the printed version. So you can read through these and you know select just from that. But you have a computer, and so you can also go to um, like Ballotpedia, California Recall. 
is a nonprofit organization that, that gathers election information and gives you a nonpartisan look at the, the candidates. And so, and they want, they want you to donate to them. That's what that was, but, um, and then you can go like Holly there who, who didn't have a lot of information in her, um, in her ballot statement, might have some more information on here. Uh, nope, she equally did not respond to their survey. So uh, the ballot statement in the voter guide costs a lot of money. So I understand why people don't fill it out, but this one was free. I would not recommend voting for someone who, <laughs> who did, not, uh, did not fill it out. But you can go through and you can learn about people. You hear about um, people like this meet, meet Kevin guy, and he'll tell you all about himself. Um, but this website will tell you about his positions and how that goes. So I, while I don't have a recommendation that answers that question of like who is, you know, the um, the 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 mid thing, who who is the middle ground candidate that could reach across the aisle, um, I I would have some opinions about uh, uh, who I would like to see governor. But really, it's just about getting access to these kind of information sources, finding a candidate you like, and then, you know, you are welcome to tell other people to vote for that person. That most of the, most of the time when we're deciding who to vote for, we rely a lot on other people giving us a heads up about people to say, to, to do that work. And if you're taking the time to watch a live stream like this, to look at a voter guide and stuff like that, then you're somebody that your friends and family are relying on. For, for opinions and, and information. And so do the work, find somebody that seems trustworthy, that you know, seems to have your interests at heart and seems like they, they, they might do a good job. Um, and they, for this list, they, again, you're not looking for somebody who's better than Gavin Newsom. Um, you're lo just looking for the best one out of this list. And so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so Jared actually uh, brought up a good point. Um, Doug O.C. did have a heart attack. He um, it withdrew from the race and he actually endorsed Kevin Kitley. I forget his last name. So O.C. is not in the race any longer. Um, and so, Jared, you are correct. He is no longer running for California governor and has put his name behind Kevin. Someone. Um, uh, so, you know, John, I, um, I want to kind of you know, both of us, we can talk about this all night. So looking at the clock, it's 730. And so I definitely kind of want to do a recap. And then um, I definitely, John, I don't want to cut you completely off if there's something that we haven't discussed. I'm looking here at our agenda and we have, but I definitely wanted to do a, a recap and then make sure that if anyone had any questions. Um, so the first thing is, is like um, John is sharing with you guys information that is available to you. Um, I think that I really, really want to piggyback, repeat, repeat what John is saying, right? It's really our job if we truly believe in democracy, right, to engage with and share information. I'm always going to just hit on accurate information, right? People are relying on you. It's been honestly, you know, so wonderful to have people text me and say that they're excited about like they got their ballot and they have questions. And so do your part, right? And, you know, share on your social media, right? Share these links, right? Share this information for those of you guys who joined us tonight, because it's all about there's, we live in a day and age with so much misinformation, Right, and it's, it happens right here where we are on Facebook, right? And so it's really up to us, um, you know, supporters of democracy and truth and honesty and facts to share that information. And I just wanna do a brief, you know, synopsis, you know, obviously we got here because a lot of people were displeased about what has been happening with the pandemic, right? And so it's been a long effort. This wasn't an easy process. It required a lot of signatures and you know, it's, it's here on the ballot. Um, again, there are some worst case scenarios. You know, the current candidate for me that is leading has indicated that he will absolutely, these are his words, he will roll back 
everything that Governor Newsom has done in regards to the pandemic. Again, if you're pleased with Newsom, then that's going to concern you. If you're displeased with Newsom, you're going to be excited about that. We have survived a recall. Schwarzenegger, right, was our governor. We didn't crumble. Um, again, we weren't in a global pandemic, but we were dealing with an economic recession. Um, and we, we move forward. And September 14th, 7 a.m. is when the polls open. Eight o'clock is when they close. Legally, you have to stand in line. Um, I'm sorry, as, as long as you are in line by eight o'clock, you have to cast your ballot. You can also, tomorrow is the last day for you to have a replacement ballot mailed to you. And as John said, on the day of, um, of the election, I actually, um, this is going to be a big for me. You guys, a lot of you guys know I have worked the election since 2006 as a field inspector. Last year was my first election that I missed because I am autoimmune compromised. And with COVID, I just was too scared. Um, but this time I, I, I'm stepping out of my, I'm really scared, but I will be the field inspector overseeing five um, polling places on uh, the 14th of the election. So you can go to any um, polling place and drop off your ballot. One thing that John said that I think is important that I want to say is, yes, you can go to any polling place. The impact of going to a different polling place if you don't have your physical ballot is, is that you will have to do what they're, what's called a provisional ballot. And a provisional ballot is a second check of your signature, your address to ensure that you're registered, to ensure that your signature aligns with your actual voter registration card. And your vote can be rejected. It can. If your signature doesn't match or there's something off, your vote is tossed out and you can, you do get a stub when you show up to vote that tells you you can check what happened with your ballot, but it's a little too late, right? Because the election has already happened. So um, if you can go to the place where you know you normally vote, the address that says like where you, you know, where you should go or make sure you take your actual ballot with you wherever you go. Because if you have your ballot in the envelope, you're good. So um, that was kind of my little little tidbit that I wanted to talk about. And um, I just wanna, first of all, ask John, I'm gonna hand it over to him if he has any final points, but I also wanna let our audience know that we are gonna repost this on, um, Abe had indicated that it wasn't streaming live to the Voter Access Project website. And so this will be uploaded to uh, the Voter Access Project um, YouTube page, as well as all KMB, all things KMB YouTube page. And so we encourage you to share this with your, with, with your friends or anyone that will be interested. And so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email, um, John, please help me out here, info at voter access project there's still plenty of time if you have additional questions and if you have some that in your on right now please uh, let me know i'm gonna watch it while john kind of closes up and i'm gonna stop talking good night i i adore you guys i'm gonna let john close this out i mean awesome no i just wanted to thank everybody for 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 coming for the interest in 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 voting and in this election and if you have any more thoughts or, or questions, definitely reach out. And um, we hope to do more lives for it. The, um, obviously, there's there's more elections coming just just months away after after this one, and and more things we want to talk about. I wanted to to share um, one last time because it made me think uh, not just with provisional ballots but also our mail-in ballots. Um, you know, sometimes we mail it in and we wonder did it get did it arrive and we've got this new ballot tracking systems that you can sign up for and if you've already submitted your ballot or you go and vote and you just want to make sure that it was it, it was counted you can go to um, register to vote.ca.gov and you click your check your your registration status button and if you fill out the form and and submit it um it will have on there a a, a thing that tells you whether or not your vote was received Did you did you have your hand up, Kim? 
No, no, I gave you a thumbs up. Oh, oh, I, I caught it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, okay. Um, so, so yeah, so that's register to vote.ca.gov. You just check your registration status and it'll have the, the link there. Um, other than that, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. I hope that you, you vote, um, encourage other people to vote. It's very important. Um, who is governor, as we've talked about, there's, there's a lot at, at stake. It's not doom and gloom if things don't go the way that you want, but um, it is important to participate and it's important to, to, to get people out and there's lots of opportunities to, to vote still. Even if you run into people who aren't registered to vote, didn't get a ballot or anything like that, they can still go on election day to their polling place. Um, and so just make sure that, that people know that. Yeah, and thank you, Jared. Thank you um, for showing up. I'm just not talking anymore um, about this. <laughs> I talked enough, but um, thank you guys for your support. Um, I did want to say really quick, if there's something you want to see as we prepare for an election in seven months, as people prepare to run for office, please email us. John, what is the email for Voter Access Project? Um, yeah, so I, still can, get, I still get in the, the link info at voteraccess.org. And so, um, yeah, and you can you can reach us on on Facebook if you're on Facebook. You can message us. We, like I'm on Twitter. So like you, you can you can find us. You can Google us. You'll you'll get to us. Um, and so we're definitely we we love doing things like this and talking about both elections and politics and 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 moving things um, for for uh, you know for people like us. To, to, to be able to change how our, our government is shaped and to, to encourage people to, to, you know, build power in their communities. And with that, I think, I think that about wraps up our, our live. I hope, uh, thank you for sticking around with us. Um, I'll, I'll say goodbye first and then Kim can say goodbye after. So goodbye. Bye guys, we'll see you soon in maybe five months, maybe seven months, but we'll be back.